afternoon. How can I help you? I like a cup of water. You want a what? I need a drink of water. Let's see, how do I put this? We are not serving your kind here. What? I am very sorry. It's a new policy. It just started two minutes ago. Look, I've traveled a long distance. I'm thirsty. I bet you are. You look very thirsty indeed. I'm going to give you water. Oh, no thanks. I am fine. Robots don't need water. But good news, even if I could serve you, we are all out of water. What's that then? Oh, this, that is a cup of water. Can I have that one? Actually, I am saving that for a friend. Oh look, is that the Dark Lord? Where? I have always wanted to get his autograph. What in the hell? Get back here. You still have to pay for the drink. Will, wake up. Wake up, Will. It's time for the new episode. Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm Will. Welcome to episode 8. This is the final episode in this series where we construct Arby. Arby is a full-size robot that gives us drinks when we're thirsty. I think what we should do now is take a look back at all the construction that took us to get to this point. There's some things that have popped up on the robot that need some repairing and some fixing uh, before we move on to the programming part of the robot. And I'll explain a little bit about some of those things that issues that I came up against. One of the first things I had to deal with was the wrist servos. Now, when I installed these, I knew there was a chance that I could have trouble with them. Um, they were kind of cheap, but I figured they weren't going to be under too much stress or load. But I got visited by blue smoke almost immediately. And I ended up having to go in and replace those with a much uh, torquier servo. Next thing I did was uh, tackle the elbow servos. Now, I knew that these servos were under an enormous amount of load, uh, but I was really happy with the way they're performing. But as I was holding positions with the arms, I noticed right away that the servo was kind of underperforming. So I kind of went back in and reevaluated, and it turned out that the servo really wasn't getting enough current. And it also, um, it's rated for 8.4 volts, and I was giving it 7.4 volts, so I gave it an extra volt and its own separate current. And uh, both of those ended up fixing that problem right away. After that, I wanted to go in and figure out how he's going to grab this cup. This cup is pretty smooth and slippery and flexible, and so is the PETG that his hand's made out of. So I decided to go in and 3D print some molds so that I could run some silicone in those, and then I can think about taking these and gluing them to the inside of the fingers in the palm so that he has more of a grip to grab onto those cups. And came up with a couple of different designs. One had long fingers, the other one was more like suction cups, and I decided to go with the smaller one with the suction cups, thinking that that was probably the better choice of the two. Then the final thing I wanted to do was 
put some lights into the chest. I felt like that the area that the whole focus is on is the center of the robot's chest, and yet it's a very dark cavity. So I wanted to take some LEDs and put a, an LED array on the inside of that body to be able to kind of highlight the bottles that are inside there and also just kind of light up that chest cavity. What I've always imagined the robot doing is that you approach the robot, he sees you, he then asks you, would you like a drink? You say yes, and then he gives you a list of drinks that he's offering. You choose one of those drinks and then he pours that drink for you. One of the things I needed to do was find out how long it took for Arby to fill a cup halfway full. So I would time it out. It turned out that ended up being around 15 seconds. Let's explore the programming a little bit. First, we have uh, the ping detector, which once someone walks up to the table, the ping detector will, will send a signal. It says if the ping distance is less than 14, then we're gonna trigger the hello script. The hello script uh, simply starts the robot listening using Bing speech recognition. And once it starts listening, so if you say, yes, I want a drink, then he goes into the three choices of drinks that you can choose from. Then it starts listening again for your response. I want the first one, that's considered drink one. The second one is drink two. The third one is drink three. And each one of these signifies which pump. Looking at the robot from the left to the right is pump one, pump two, pump three. If I chose the first drink in the list, then it starts the animation, lifting up his left arm and grabbing a cup, putting the cup onto the table. And the second arm comes up to pour the liquid into the cup. And it's completed, then you want to start the pump. And we're gonna run the pump for uh, 10,000 milliseconds, which is 10 seconds. That gives us about a third of a cup just for testing, but this is probably going to go up to about 15 seconds. That will give you about half a cup with no ice. Then it's going to release a couple of servos to give them a break, and then it's going to start the ping script again, waiting for another customer, and it starts the whole cycle over again. This robot's six foot three. That's 190 centimeters for the rest of you, and I can tell you one thing. It is scary as hell to program this robot. Uh, things can go wrong very quickly. Um, the robot can be damaged. Um, a person could be damaged. So it uh, was nerve wracking to say the least to get the animation sequences going. Stop, stop. <laughs> Slowly and methodically, I build up the animations for both arms. One for picking up the cup and placing it on the table, and the other arm for bringing it up and positioning over top of the cup to dispense the liquid. feeling really confident with the way the robot's operating right now, so I think it's a great time to bring him into the house and get him to start serving some drinks.
here is your drink. Please, have a wonderful day. Thanks. Hello, my name is Abby. May I pour you a drink? Yes. Okay, please choose a drink from this list. Your choices are... Grape drink. Orange juice. Fruit punch. You can say cancel to cancel your order. Or say repeat to repeat the drink list. Orange juice. Okay, coming right up. Well, that turned out awesome. I think uh, the kids love RB. Uh, we love RB too. I think he's going to be a great addition to all the other robots around this house. Performed very well. Uh, I certainly think that there's room for improvement. We would love to investigate using inverse schematics to be able to control his arms so we could get a smoother uh, animation on those. There'll be lots of other updates that we'll probably do over the uh, coming months. So let's talk a little bit about season two. Season two is going to be a little different than season one in that we're not going to concentrate on just a single robot project. There'll be multiple robot projects, uh, smaller scale, and I'm going to have those STLs available for people to download and also build along with the robots going to be building on the show, like this one, which uh, was a hexapod that I built maybe a year ago now, and um, got him to stand, but he never was able to walk. So we're going to re place all the servos that hopefully will get him up and walking around, which would be cool. I want to take the time out to say thank you to all the subscribers, everybody who's viewed the videos, and anyone who is supporting me on Patreon. I think that's it for this episode. Episode 8 and Season 1 is finished. It's time to start Season 2. We'll see you next time on Real Robots.